Hello and welcome back! Today's video is one I've been wanting to do for months, ever since I took delivery of my ATI HD 3850 AGP card. This card is the fastest ever made for the now defunct Accelerated Graphics Port, or AGP slot for short. AGP was phased out around 2004, having been around for about 7 years by that point, and it was the precursor to PCI Express which I'm sure most of you will be more familiar with. Anyway, as PCIe came in and AGP was retired, a handful of PCIe cards were made with bridge chips to work in an AGP slot. So you can get an HD3850 in both AGP and PCIe versions. I'd wanted one of these for ages, and finally got one so I could push my Athlon XP machine to its limits. Oh, I suppose I could try it in my Pentium 2 machine as well. But then I was thinking, what's better than having the fastest AGP card on the planet? Having two! This one came through the post yesterday. It cost half as much is boxed, has all of its bits, and even has the driver CD with the sometimes tricky to find graphics card drivers particular to this hybrid card. I was a bit miffed to see that there was no foam or bubble wrap or anything to protect the card, but it all looked just fine, and if it didn't work, I reasoned, I had a spare now. So let's compare the two. The top one is my older one, so you know which is which. Notable differences are the older one has blue capacitors here, whereas the newer one has red ones. The markings are the same, so just a change of supplier perhaps? Next, the newer one has a sticker identifying it as V0932, and its larger caps have gold and black colouring. The older card is stickered as V09-09, and its large caps are brown and grey coloured. Moving to the back, the differences are less. The old card is stickered with A0910000137222, and the newer says A0932000016225. No idea what they mean. The only other difference I can see is in the pad protecting the Rialto bridge chip, the one I mentioned earlier that makes a PCIe card work as AGP. The new cards pad looks as good as new, whereas the old cards pad has clearly seen some action. Let's see if they both work, and how loud the fans get. This is the older card. You can tell from the brown capacitors. Oh, thank God. Ah! This is the newer card. See the black and gold capacitor. Right. So, my plan is to remove the ridiculously loud heatsink and replace it with something else. I'm just removing the screws that hold it together. There are four more around here somewhere from when I took it apart before to repaste it. I just didn't bother putting them back. So this is the stock cooler that makes all the noise. Nothing special, but it does have a copper block for heat dissipation. I wonder how well it works. If only the fan was quieter. Here we have the HD3850 in all its naked glory. Now it's time to remove the paste I'd put on using a cotton pad and some isopropyl alcohol. So, this is what I'll be using as a replacement cooler. An Arctic Cooling Accelero L2 Plus, which I picked up on eBay for £20 second hand. It's rated to work with this and higher powered cards, so it should do just fine. As you can see, it comes with all the bits and bobs. Now for the obligatory alcohol cleaning.
Remove all the screws so I can attach it in a bit. Next I need to check the instructions to make sure the bracket is the right way round and the spacers are in the correct place. I'll want to fit the RAM sinks as well and the good news is I have enough. The bad news is that the thermal adhesive is still on there from the previous owner and won't just wipe off so I'm going to try this Goo Gone stuff which I've used in the past. Don't drink it. Well the Goo Gone was a complete waste of time so instead I'm going to carry on without RAM sinks. Next is the thermal paste. I'll be using MX4 like I do on all my CPU installations and go for my tried and tested whole die blanket approach. I'm never entirely sure that the old P in the middle and squeeze it out technique is going to work so I pretty much always just cover the whole thing. Next is to line up the holes and sockets by eye then get the screws in. It isn't going to win any beauty awards that's for sure but it should get the job done. Next I have a 7 volt and 12 volt connector to attach for power via a Molex plug. The instructions say nothing useful and just point to a website that no longer exists so I'm going to try one and then the other one I guess. With my camera back in the same position as before, let's see how it sounds. The answer is that it sounds horrendous! Until you realise that actually what you're hearing is the old hard disk spinning up. Let's do this properly. I'm using my desk microphone to record the audio while B-roll testing footage shows. So we're going to go with the 7 volt first. Well, that's not bad considering how close the microphone is. Now for 12 volt. That's definitely a bit louder. So now we've tried the new cooler on both voltage settings. Let's test the other 3850 for a comparison. If you remember from earlier in the video, both cards were as loud as each other. Well, that is a lot louder. Okay, so now with the stock versus replacement fan sound comparison side out of the way, and the new heatsink on, let's try this bad boy out on a benchmark. Now, it plays games just fine, but sometimes when running benchmarks, depending on the test, this happens and then it all restarts. So let's do a good old fashioned Fermark stress test instead, both at 7 and 12 volts. Here we are at 7 volts. I have hardware info running in the background charting the GPU temperature so we can see the cooling results once it's been stressed for a couple of minutes. Ok so that topped out at 65 degrees after 2 minutes of Fermark. Let's see what happens with the fan cranked up to 12 volts. Well, 63 is a bit underwhelming. A 2 degree difference for all that extra noise. Well, you're probably wondering what the stock cooler temperature gets to, aren't you? OK. So, here is the second 3850 with the stock cooler and running at idle, its default temperature with an open-sided case in my room is 44 degrees. After running Fermark for two minutes I could definitely hear the fan speeding up even faster and then when it finished, I got a bit of a shock. The stock 3850 had doubled its temperature from a recorded start temp of 43 degrees to a peak of 86. The card with the replacement fan however went from a chilly 40 at both fan settings to 63 and 65 depending on the voltage of the fan. So 
In conclusion, if you get an AGP3850, I suggest you look into replacing the cooler on it. I'm going to see if I can find some more to test with it and let you know how they do. At some point, I'm going to get that thermal adhesive off those ramp sinks and stick them on with thermal pads, but for now it seems just fine with airflow cooling the memory. Well, that about wraps this video up, so until next time, bye bye